Hey, what's up guys? It's Justin with California Grenadiers, just out here in the garage, uh, tinkering with the Grenadier. Uh, we were at Agile Off-Roads uh, open house yesterday, and a lot of the sponsors and vendors were there, and Eibach was there, and they just finished up their last set of uh, prototypes, well, second set of prototypes. Uh, my prototype first shocks, um, kind of blew them up. The mounting um, clevises were not in the ideal position and the uh, bushings were too narrow and the sleeves were too thin. So I brought them that feedback um, and uh, they, they redid it. And at the event, I Bach was there. Um, I brought the car. Uh, we were in the booth uh, with them talking about the shocks, um, talking about the different upgrades and uh, changes we made to the vehicle, um, especially the springs and the drive shaft. Um, but now they gave us the second set of prototypes for me to test. Um, they brought them along with them. So let's check them out. Um, I'm gonna also install them, uh, but that'll be another video. But I just wanted to show you guys what these look like off of the vehicle, that way you can get a good look at them. On the vehicle, you can't see them too well. So let's go ahead and open her up. I'm going to take them out here, set them down, so you guys can get a better look, get rid of this box here. So, these shocks, Eibach has been working on them for a while now since they came out with the springs uh, because, you know, the, the car is a little bit squishy, the shocks. Um, they're comfortable and they're good for, you know, off-road and stuff, but I think there was a lot of room for improvement. As you know, um, all the shock manufacturers uh, work on things as cars, new cars are released and customer demand, but you know, a lot of customers complain about the ride quality uh, or the handling on these cars. So Eibach, um, King, Box, Radflow, they've all kind of got solutions now. You know, the Kings, the Radflows, the Foxes are amazing, beautiful shocks, right? Um, rebuildable, all that but they're very expensive. Um, not everybody needs that. Um, if you're not really off-roading really hard, you probably don't need that um, because that's like overkill. You know, if you're off-roading, you might need that if you're off-roading hard. Um, if you're doing um, pretty decent off-roading, this is a good solution because it's a lot more affordable. This is like an entry-level shock, entry-level kind of performance shock. Um, Whereas the Foxes, the, the Kings, the Rad Flows, they're amazing, don't get me wrong. I came from the rock crawling world. I had King coilovers on my Jeep, 14 inches, 2.5s. They were amazing. They rode great on the street. They were adjustable. They were amazing, uh, but they were super expensive. They were like $1,500, $1,600 a corner. These are probably gonna be somewhere between like 250 and 300, I think, somewhere around there. Um, don't quote me on that, but I would imagine that's what that price point would be on these. So, um, as you can see, let me get this a little closer for you. Uh, these are 2.0 reservoir shocks. They're pretty cool because they're piggyback. So they have like decent hardware. Um, as you can see, the sleeve on the bushing is a lot thicker than the previous and the bushing itself is wider so that it fits snugly into the mounts, both top and bottom. Um, these components are pretty nice, you know, um, pretty good for a $250 shock. Um, it's got the clamp here um, to clamp the reservoir to the shock. Um, you can fill it, you know, with nitrogen um, to adjust the pressure, uh, that would kind of give you more or less uh, compression and rebound uh, force. Um, it's not 
as easy to dial like it doesn't change the valving or anything it just increases the pressure so it's not as easy to dial in the feel of the shock like if you don't like that they're stiff you can release some pressure um, but then you might get more shock fade because the the gas inside isn't um, staying as charged um, if you think they're too squishy then you can fill it up more and uh, then you'll have a, a more planted feel um, so it's just a Schrader valve, but you got to use nitrogen. Um, if you use just regular air, you're going to introduce bubbles and then the shock's not going to perform. Um, 150 to 200 PSI, so you got some adjustability there. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty nice shock. So as you can see, this one, so I'm holding it uh, parallel to the camera the upper mount is slanted because the the mounting on these shocks when it was straight it was hitting the tire um, or it wasn't clearing the frame so that's why they had to go back and adjust it because before when i was testing it we had to run it like this and that's not ideal for um, an off-road vehicle you want the shaft downwards um, you want more clearance, you want less damage. I mean, people will argue you're going fast, you're gonna be nicking the, the shaft, um, but that's okay, you know, like, this is like a consumable, you know? Like, you're gonna go through this after a couple of years, like three, five years maybe, um, if you're not off-roading it very hard. Um, I could see it maybe lasting three years if you're off-roading hard, um, or, you know, the, the the valves and the bushings and everything um, and the uh, o-rings and stuff they will go bad eventually just from like regular driving so I mean this is a great option for an entry level um, for guys that just want it for the road you know this is gonna be a vast improvement over the factory uh, feel um, for the guys you know they're gonna off-road hard they're gonna drive this thing fast you know, it's not really built for that but i guess you could um then this will work but you're gonna wear them out faster and you won't be able to rebuild them that's the only downside of this they're not rebuildable but for 250 bucks a pop that's not bad that's not a bad uh cost of entry so there's two that have the slanted uh style and then the two that are just straight um, I believe the straight ones are for the front. I won't be able to see until I get the shocks out. Uh, they are the same length travel, so I, I think the slanted ones go in the back just to clear the, um, the upper uh, shock bucket. So, pretty nice shock. It's got good um, hardware here. The tubing. It's hard tubing because uh, you don't need a... Uh, a hose because it's not remote it's a piggyback like i said this clamp this clamp's pretty trick that's cool it's a cool clamp you know the the labels and everything looks good you know fits the car and you know these are um tuned for their their lift tip for their shocks you know a lot of people ask um oh shouldn't the shock be longer technically yes the shock should be longer but that would require a proper kit. That would require, you know, control arms that are adjustable, uh, track bars, uh, so that you can recenter the axle, and also bump stops, because once you lengthen the shock, you're gonna have to lengthen the body. So if you lengthen the shocks travel by like two inches, you gotta lengthen the body, so that when you have the up travel, it's gonna stop there instead of there. So you need to lengthen the bump stops so that you're not bottoming out the shock and destroying the shock. Um, with that though, you, you can potentially lose up travel uh, depending on how you have the bump stops set up and your arms and your links and all of that. The other caveat of that is that right now, as you guys all know, the drive shaft is kind of a major concern for this car. Um, it is for all other off-road vehicles from the factory as well. It's a booted CV, um, high failure point, um, not just because of the angles, but just because wear and tear. 
but once you lift these things, the angle gets pretty extreme. So um, that's why I have the uh, double double cardin built. Originally, we started with the double cardin um, at the transfer case and a single joint at the differential, which is very common with Jeeps and other vehicles with solid axles. Uh, but the angle on this transfer case goes upwards. So that worsens the angle. That's kind of like what I've heard is uh, common on Defenders as well, their transfer cases up like that. So the angle's terrible. So then you get all the driveline vibes, um, harmonics and things like that. Um, so you get the double double card in, so you have a double card in on the transfer case side and on the differential side. That allows it to soak up some more of that vibration. Um, but then you still have to adjust the angles. Right now, uh, with the factory uh, arms, the only thing that you can adjust is the caster. Um, there is a caster pinion relationship, um, but it's minimal how much you can adjust with caster bolts, and it's not ideal. So we're just waiting for, you know, like Metal Cloak is gonna come out with a kit. Um, then we'll be able to really dial in the pinion angle. Um, but with that being said, going back to the shocks, um, Right now, the limiting factor is the shocks and the travel. So once you bottom out on the shocks, uh, the drive shaft is still kind of in a safe zone. Like it's not going to explode or anything. Like you're not gonna drop it out of the shock or you're not gonna hit the, um, the uh, like shroud, I guess, on the, uh, on the drive shaft. Cause that's when you're gonna pinch that boot and it's gonna tear cause you're, you're spinning. Um, so that's not going to happen because the shock is stopping it. Um, but once you put in a longer shock, then it's going to bottom out that, uh, that shroud and that shaft, and it's going to damage it. With the, with the, uh, the double card in, the uh, U-jointed shaft, um, you don't run into that problem because they can operate at more extreme angles um, without pinching anything or blowing up, you know, like it can, if it's like at a very extreme angle, you're going to blow it up. But, um, with a double card and it gives those joints a lot more angle on both ends. So that gives you the ability to have more droop and more travel, but then you need a longer shock. Um, the other limiting factor is the brake lines. So if you lengthen the shock, but you don't lengthen the brake lines to accommodate that extra travel. When you droop all the way out, your brake line is going to be stretched and could potentially uh, break. You know, it'll pop, whatever, rip off the connectors, whatever. Then you're hard down. You got no brakes. Um, if you're going at speed, uh, that could be a very bad day. Uh, if you're rock crawling, that could also be a very bad day because if you're going uphill, downhill, anything like that, if you're in an obstacle, um, you're only going to have forward and reverse. You won't have stopping power. Um, the only stopping power that you'll have is the brake, the emergency brake, and that's not very strong, you know. Uh, so those are the considerations right now. Um, there are some companies that have brake lines. Brake lines are easy. You can take it to a brake shop. They can put in longer brake lines. Um, but other companies are coming out with uh, extended brake line kits um, and that's going to be the solution there if you want to get a little bit more travel. Um, polyurethane uh, bump stops will be fine as well. Those are probably really easy to get a, a hold of. You could probably put a spacer in there even and just use the factory bump stop. Um, just depends on how much uh, longer of a shock we end up getting. I can see them making like, you know, maybe a two inch longer shock. Um, that'll give us, it'll kind of like reestablish what the factory um, travel was uh, for the up travel and the down travel. It'll kind of bring it back to that, the right height of the two and a half inch lift. Uh, so it'll have a little bit better performance. Um, and with 35 inch tires, uh, it's tucking really well right now. There's no need for a longer bump stop, but um, potentially 37s. So that would be cool, uh, but that's gonna require fenders. Um, but anyway, these shocks, they're gonna work for um, factory height. They'll work for factory height because they're identical length, um, but also the lifted height, and they're made to pair with their springs, uh, the spring rates that they have. 
so it should ride uh, really well compared to stock. Um, the stock ride, I don't mind. I kind of like a squishy ride. Um, I like it when it feels soft and plush. Um, but when I put these ones in the first time, I also like that too. It, it handled really well. There was no more body roll, which was kind of nice. Um, and it was a little stiffer, not harsh, but just stiffer. Um, so it gave it a little more of a sporty feel, like a, a more planted feel. Um, but you can't really adjust them. So, you know, you kind of have to try them or you have to have an understanding of what aftermarket shocks tend to feel like. Uh, different brands are going to have different feels. Like I've heard that Old Man Emu uh, tends to be on the softer side. Um, and then Eibach, you know, is predominantly go fast stuff, you know, so it's probably going to feel a little bit stiffer than uh, uh, Old Man Emu. Um, similarly with King, Fox, Radflow, you know, but those can all be custom valved, you know, to the weight of your car, um, what speeds you're going to be seeing, um, what kind of terrain, things like that, uh, what your spring rates are. Um, what kind of load you're carrying, you know, where it's at, because you can corner balance things if you wanted to, you know, that's starting to get into race car stuff. But for this car, that's not really necessary. Um, they're cool though, and it's blingy. Um, a lot of guys like the bling. Um, of course, I like the bling, but I want it to first and foremost work. So this is gonna work. I'm gonna give it a shot, see how it goes. Um, and I'll give you guys a review. Um, I'll kind of uh, try to see if I can get some video of it installed. Um, changing shocks is really easy. It should be maybe like half an hour, hour job. Uh, so I'm not gonna bore you guys with installing it. It's just, you unbolt stuff and you bolt it back in. So um, uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions or thoughts, um, please comment in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer. Um, I'll put some stuff on in, uh, Instagram and on Facebook as well, and probably on the uh, Ineos forum too, to kind of give my thoughts about it. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.